What do you think of when you imagine life under the sea? If your mind goes to film and TV, maybe you see a colorful clownfish darting past a dancing crab. Or maybe you have seen strange deep sea life or eerie shipwrecks in documentaries. If you had the luck to snorkel or scuba dive, perhaps you remember personal experiences of coral reefs. From sea monsters to sponges, what lies beneath the ocean has always held a mystery and fascination for us. And even with more access to and knowledge about marine life, that hasn't changed. But the more we've learned, the more we understand threats in the ocean. And sometimes those threats are closer to home. This is ASU. There's something about the ocean and the plants and animals that live there that calls to us. This is especially true for coral reefs. Here life seems to explode in a range of colors and variety of creatures, including coral itself. It's in these ecosystems where life is so abundant that we have been seeing some disturbing changes. Many coral reefs have started to die or have already died. When a coral reef is lost, all that is left are the skeletons of the tiny animals that made them. This is not just the loss of one animal. The loss of living coral impacts the entire ecosystem that relied on them. This is because corals are a keystone species for the marine world, maybe the keystone species. When they are lost, many other plants and animals die. So losing coral reefs is not a good sign for the health of our oceans and for us. Scientists have been studying what might be causing the loss of these important animals. It turns out they are very sensitive to temperature changes. When the water temperature warms, the corals will expel the algae that lives in their tissues. These algae provide corals with a source of food. When the algae is lost, the coral becomes white or bleached looking it is not dead at this time, but it now has lost a major food source and is more likely to become diseased. If this sounds like this might have something to do with climate change, you are correct. But it's not just the gradual increase in global temperatures, it's also the effect of El Nino that is also impacting corals. El Nino is when there are periods of unusually warm water in the Pacific. This is something that does not happen on a regular basis, but when it does, it can last a year or more. Scientists have compared past data from El Niños with coral bleaching events, and they found that during this time, coral bleaching increases. Normally, these infrequent events aren't too hard to handle, but as things heat up, the impact on them becomes much worse. This one-two punch of climate warming with El Niño makes the bleaching events much more severe. You might be wondering, what can I do about this? Besides battling climate change and warming the oceans, there are other things we can do now that are more immediate. The warmer waters puts corals in jeopardy, but pollution is also a stressor on corals that can make matters worse. To help, you can swap out your sunscreen for coral-safe versions. If you avoid the usual sunscreens made with oxybenzone and octinazate, that's a start. Instead, opt for a non-nano mineral-based sunscreens. This way you can help reduce the stress on coral reefs. This also applies even if you don't visit the ocean. Washing your sunscreen off your body in the shower or bath still allows these chemicals to enter the water system, which often ends up at the ocean. In addition to switching your sunscreen, reducing the use of single-use plastics can also help coral reefs and the ocean ecosystem. These are simple life changes that can make a positive impact on the future of coral reefs. And if you want to learn more about this research into the impact of El Nino or coral reefs, read the Ask a Biologist Plausible, Hot Flashes in the Ocean at askabiologist.asu.edu. Our oceans have been a source of wonder and inspiration for millennia. And they are also a crucial aspect of life on Earth. Small changes like these will help preserve corals and their unique ecosystems for the future, keeping both fanciful stories about underwater kingdoms and their very real, necessary counterparts alive and well.
This was ASU. Thanks for watching.